sorry you guys i went to lean back and i'm like whoa there's a wall there <laughs> hey there welcome to my channel my name is linda i've got some fun diy home decor crafts coming your way <laughs> so what are we waiting for let's get started today we'll be working on some rustic farmhouse spring decor so let's get started with project number one for this project, I'm going to use this round sign from Dollar Tree, any like wood circle, but mine is a little smaller. I'm going to be using this uh, package of carrots you can also get from Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to be using one of these bunnies that came from craftingwithkimber.com. It come in a side view or a front view. I'll have all the links down to the craftingwithkimber.com products I'll be using in my description box. We're going to use quite a bit of them today. Now, Dollar Tree does have these smaller side view bunnies. You can see the significance of how much smaller it is but it will still work. And then this set of 12 mini hearts, also craftingwithkimber.com, just one little heart. And then I've created a free printable for you. It'll be a PDF and a PNG, and I've made it with the circle around it so that you know where to cut it out at. So this wood circle I'm using is eight inches. And this one is about probably seven and a half, seven and three quarters, something like that. If you cut along that circle line for you and I will have it as a PDF, which is the way I'm going to use it in this project today, or a PNG. If you want to take it to your electronic cutting machine, you just need to clean it out, clean the background in between the letters. Okay. So for the circle, I'm just taking the wood word off and the screw and stuff off the back, of course, and the sticker using my heat tool to get that sticker up. And I'm going to go ahead and sand all this paper off. Now you could just use the back side if you want, but I didn't want to have to fill that tiny little hole. So I'd rather just sand the paper off. I'll be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, this orange paint. I kind of mixed two oranges together, this mud paint in a sage green color. And we'll just start our uh, painting process. Love painting these little carrots for some reason this year you're going to see a lot of bunnies and carrots coming out in my spring decor i don't necessarily use bunnies and carrots as easter but i love to use it for spring decor because spring to me is you know like new life and new cute little you know bunnies coming out and stuff like that so a lot of my spring decor this year i'm sorry you guys is going to be bunnies and carrots i just can't get enough of it right now for some reason um, so just kind of continuing on painting around my wood circle here. I'll do the front, you know, the sides and the back a little bit. I don't really need to paint the center because we'll cover that up. Painting my little side view bunny here. Looking cute. I kind of went a little bit vintage with this project and I like how it turned out. Painting my one little mini heart. Remember, you'll get a set of 12 of those. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and add back to our carrots and add our little greenery on top. I was like really excited when I saw like these carrots and eggs and bunnies and stuff that Dollar Tree came out with. Now I'm going to go ahead, once everything's painted, I'll just show a tiny bit here, but I'm going to come in and just, you know, distress around the edges and give it a little bit more of a rustic look here. It's what it looks like, of course. And as usual, you don't have to sand if you don't want to. I'm going to use this stylus tool. You get it. It's at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use, um, this is Dixie Belle um, chalk paint in the color terracotta. And it's one of the colors of the orange I mixed in to make my orange for these carrots. And I'm using it just, you know, adding the dots here, as you can see, because it adds a nice kind of tone on tone color. Um, so it's not in your face, but you get to add that little bit of embellishing to it. And then I watered down some of that um, drop cloth paint, and I'm just using a paintbrush here, a little thin slender paintbrush, and just adding a few little lines in the greenery part. Sometimes I, you know, I can get a little heavy handed with it, but that's okay for me. And if you want it um, more of like a wash in there, just add a little bit more water to your paint. So here's what my PDF looks like. I printed it onto some cardstock. You're going to see this look different a little bit later because for some reason I decided I wasn't liking the, <laughs> the paper I chose for this, but just print it out onto your cardstock from whatever program you want to use. I bring it down into uh, my publisher program, print it out, um, and then cut along that line and it'll fit your circle. You might have to resize it depending on the circle you're using, but you know, it's there for you. And now I'm just using my sewing machine here. It's a size 10 or 11 needle stitch length on four, 
tension set on for. I use all polyester thread. That's what my machine likes, but cotton will work fine. And you just sew on your paper like it's regular fabric. Don't be scared of it. This is what it looks like. If you find your holes are too big as you're sewing, go down to like a size nine needle. You got to play around with it a little bit. Here you can see it a little better on the cardstock. This is going to cover the back of my sign. And now to add a little more texture, I've got the open end of my scissor blades and I'm just scraping along the edges of all my papers. So if you're not a sewer, this adds great rustic texture just doing this little trick right here. That's what this looks like. Okay. All right, and then I'm taking that watered down paint again and my fan brush and I dip it into the paint and kind of wipe off the excess and then tap my fan brush and it gives me nice little splatters everywhere. So I splattered this, the heart, I think I did a little bit on the carrots coming up, um, you know, I also splattered the bunny with some pink splatter paint, pink paint that I watered down, splattered that on. So we got the back of our sign covered. Now we're going for the front here. Here's my paper change. I just thought it looked cuter. Here's my bunny splattered with some watered down pink paint. And we're going to center that right above our cottontail sweet shop. Yeah, I thought the stripes just looked cuter. It kind of went in with the cottontail sweet shop, you know. And then we're going to go ahead and glue our carrots in between the words. So you all, this PDF gave me so much headache. I probably spent four or five hours on it because I kept having to redesign and re-arc the words and kept trying to get them smaller and smaller to fit these carrots in there. But I got it done for you. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> adding a little twine bow on the bunny and adding a little tiny pom-pom for the tail. And then we're going to add the little heart down below next to the shop word. And then I got one of these little frames at Dollar Tree. I took all the hardware off the front because we're going to use the back for the easel to make our circle stand up. Use a little Gorilla Glue to glue this onto the back of our sign at the bottom. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm using this uh, craft wood piece from Dollar Tree. I think it's about 12 inches. I'm going to use this long sign that came from Dollar Tree as well. I like these because it's not paper on the front. It's painted. It's going to make it so much easier. Again, bringing in these cute little bunnies from Dollar Tree. I'm going to bring in from craftingwithkimber.com these eggs. These are like two inch size wood eggs and a couple of carrots. These are like one and a quarter inch, I think, one and a half inch tall carrots from Crafting with Kimber and a couple of these hearts. They come in a set of four. Again, all my links for Crafting with Kimber will be down in the description box below. So the sign, you can leave it as it is, but I wanted to shorten it a little bit. So I took it down. You can see how much I cut off there. I took it down to about a 12 and a half inch sign. So I'm going to again use a Dixie Bell chalk paint in the color drop cloth. I'm bringing in my orange and my green paint like we had in the first project. Um, so those colors are kind of go with us throughout our projects today. So I'm just, you know, adding the drop cloth around our main sign here and that little um, uh, slat board from Dollar Tree. I didn't have to cut that down at all. I left that in, in its length entirety. But if you don't have, you know, like um, cutting tools or, you know, saws or whatever to make these shorter, that home sign, you could leave it the um, length that it is you just kind of space out your eggs a little bit further as we get to that part and make it work for you if you don't have anything to cut these with but that sign from dollar tree it's not real wood so a craft knife and a ruler make a couple of passes you could probably snap it if you do want it shorter just working on painting this slat board here i think this one turned out fun uh, painting my eggs so this picture of course i saw on pinterest but it was like a one you could buy in a store. And I'm like, okay, how can I make that a little bit funner and a little bit more 3D and of course crafty it versus just a plain flat sign? I think uh, the idea turned out good. Just finishing all my little carrots here. We'll move on to the little bunny. 
really super cute. I like how it's turning out, just even with the paint. And then we'll come in with the carrots. I chose these carrots. You could use the ones from Dollar Tree like we used on the first project, but I wanted these a little bit bigger, okay? So that's why I chose these ones. All right, so everything's done. Now I've pre-cut my paper to fit my projects. All I did was trace them and then cut the wood pieces and the eggs and that and then just cut my papers out just a little bit shorter all the way around so that you see that little bit of wood perimeter. That's all I did. I just cut them so you know my paper doesn't go exactly edge to edge. And I did everything except the carrots and the bunny. We're going to leave those just painted. And you know, of course you can see I've kind of got aquas and pinks and purples. Um, just, you know, those spring fun colors. And then, of course, showing just a little bit here, but I'm sanding and distressing along the edges of all my pieces here just to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. Perfectly wonderful. All right, and then I'm coming in, of course, with my sewing machine again, sewing all my papers around the edges. Of course, if you're not a sewer, you can skip this part. I just really like how sewing ends up on, you know, my projects. I think it gives it a little bit of a country charm look. Those who've been with me a while, you know it. But, you know, I get new subscribers all the time. This is what it looks like, so it's their first time hearing it. Um, and I don't try to be real straight with my sewing. It kind of comes out wonky a little bit. Sometimes that's okay with me. But, uh, again, coming in with the open end of my scissor blades, adding texture. I love to add the texture because it's it kind of pops it up off your wood a little bit. It gives you that little bit of difference between your paper just laying flat on your wood. It just it just does something different for me. If you don't like to sew, you don't want to add the texture, leave it alone. You don't even have to add the paper if you don't want. You could use just different colors of paint and then sand it and make it rustic and it'll work for you that way. It'll be perfectly wonderful. So after, after everything is all, you know, distressed and sewn and, you know, along the edges, I'm coming back in and adding some splatter and stuff again I like to do this as well just gives it a little something something a little bit more texture here comes my pink splatter for this bunny just like I did in the first project and again I'm coming tone on tone and adding some of the dots onto my carrots just a simple little way to add some of that texture and fun to it and then of course I will come in again here with the watered down white paint add my little um little lines on here. You could do squiggly lines. If you don't want to use paint, you can use, you know, the Sharpie markers, the white Sharpie markers, make your little squiggly lines, make some dots, whatever you want. Coming in with just a tiny bit of splatter here. Not too much. You don't want to overwhelm the carrots. And here again is another uh, printable for you. This is again a PDF and a PNG for you for electronic cutting machines. And again, I'll have the fonts listed down below in case you just want to do your own. Okay. So um, this one, I am going to use my Cricut, my electronic cutting machine, as you see here, and I cut it out in some white vinyl. But if you want to use the PDF because you don't have a cutting machine, just do like we did in the first project, print it out onto your paper first, and then cut your paper to fit your sign, okay? Nice and easy. Of course, you probably won't be able to print in white. You're going to have to do black, <laughs> but that's okay. I almost did black vinyl, decided to go with white. And then we're going to start gluing everything down into position here. I like how that turned out and glue all our papers onto everything that needs to be glued to, right? Papers on our little hearts. And yes, I sewed around those tiny little hearts. Those are probably not a one inch big. I know, I'm crazy, right? <laughs> Adding the paper to our eggs. And you can use all the same color papers on your eggs and stuff if you want. I just kind of wanted a couple of different ones. Perfect. So as you can see here, I kind of chose a pink polka dot and a little text paper. Added glue on all these ahead of time. Save some time for you guys. And then going ahead and adding our front paper to the front of our sign. And I, yes, did, of course, cover the back. Or I will cover it here, I think, in a minute. I thought I already did that. Here comes the back side. Just some white cardstock just to cover it up. Make it all finished off. I just like my stuff finished off on the back mostly because I sell it at craft shows, so I want it to look nice and finished at the back. All right, so now what I'm doing is I laid my little sign at the top, and I'm just marking where I want to put some holes, okay, and just making sure, of course, the same spot from side and bottom. 
and I'm just going to use a tiny little drill bit and going to drill holes. Now, you don't have to. You could just glue on top, okay? I'm going to use some of this 18-gauge wire, a couple of pieces here, probably six inches. Probably don't even need that many. Here's my tiny little drill bit. Drill a hole. It's just big enough to fit that wire through, one on each end. But if you don't use a drill or anything like that, you can just glue your wire to the top. It will work perfectly wonderful. So now I'm just taking that wire and just, you know, twirling it around the end of a paintbrush. If you're going to glue the wire right on top, you don't need to leave that little half inch. I've got a little half inch or so straight piece where I didn't glue it because that's what's going to go through the holes. And you just smush that wire together. See, there goes the straight piece through the holes. And then I'll bend it over on the back. All right, just like that, nice and easy. Now, when I put this wire in, as I put the sign down, it wobbles. See that? We want to fix that. Can't handle it. If you just glue wire on top, you don't got to worry about it. But I'm going to add just a couple of craft sticks here, um, and that takes care of it. It's about the thickness of that wire, so it takes the wobble right out. Just going to add it right to the bottom of the sign there because the top edge, probably about an inch of the uh, sign, is going to hang off. Perfect, just like that, and now it's nice and stable. Gonna go ahead and glue my eggs down here. Now, don't mind me, I will do a lot of things just by eye, you know, just kind of eyeballing it, but um, I'm pretty compulsive about, I want things straight and even spacing in between. That's how my mind operates, so as I do the eggs, you know, I'm making sure I have a half inch in between, it's about a quarter inch up from the bottom, but you don't have to do that, it's just my, Queaky, quirky, whatever you want to queaky. It's a new name. My quirky, <laughs> how my quirky brain works. But aside from all that quirkiness, <laughs> my eggs are lined up and super cute. And so now I'm going to add the two little hearts onto the text paper. That's why I did those just a little bit differently. And then I'm going to add a carrot on each end egg, just a little bit slanted, looking super cute. And then, of course, we're going to add the bunny in the center egg. And once I do that, you know it, this project is complete. Let's move on to project number three. So for this project, this is a kit from craftingwithkimber.com. It is a kit that I dreamed up and my friend Kim designed it up and I love it. This bunny is about 14 and a half inches tall, done on half inch wood so it can stand completely up. You get the little wonky tail with it. You have a little tag here that comes with some different pieces like this cute little wonky carrot you could put on the tag or maybe you want to put the flower on the tag or maybe the flower up on the ear. I don't know, um, maybe the little heart, this little wonky heart that's super cute. She just get, put some extra pieces into play with it. This is a half inch cut on half inch wood carrot, so it stands up. It's about five and a half inches in length, and then she made the separate little greenery to go on top to give it some 3D. I love, love, love this kit. Thank you, Miss Kim, for, you know, making up my vision. So, um... Using all the same paints we've used in the other projects, so I'm adding in a little bit of Waverly wax mixed with water. Okay, so we're going to start painting everything. These wonky carrots are so stinking cute. I love them, and I can't wait for you guys to see. I have in the next upcoming videos another kit that Kim and I have dreamed up, plus some little add-on things that you can buy. So I can't wait to share all those with you. So just painting these all up. Oh my gosh, these carrots. I just... I Sorry, I keep talking about these carrots. <laughs> As I'm painting the carrots, you can see on my bunny about four inches up from the bottom, I've used a little bit of tape there because I kind of want to tape that off. I want a little bit of differential. And I've used this antique wax mixed with water, and I want this to just look like a stain on the bottom half of the bunny. And then, of course, once that dries, 
it's not the bottom half, it's the bottom whatever it is. <laughs> Move the paint so then that my paint line is, you know, my tape is now at the paint line of my Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm gonna paint the top with that um, Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. I just really wanted this to be farmhouse, just a slight bit of paper. So it's kind of the paper and paint combined combo again. I It was really hard for me because I really just kind of wanted to paint it all and distress it. But you all know me, I like to just add in just a little something extra. So I'll usually add in some scrapbook paper just to give it a little bit different touch. And I really love how this came out. Thank you, Kim, so much for, you know, making up my dream vision here. Just painting our little wonky tail, painting our little tag here, our little heart. And then I'll pull the paint off soon as everything is dry. And now I'm coming with the top portion there and I'm tracing it onto some scrapbook paper. This is double sided. I'm going to be using the other side of the scrapbook paper, okay? And I just traced it up above the line where that Waverly Wax is, right? Now I'm tracing the tag and the little tail and the carrot, and then I will cut everything out just a little bit shorter all the way around. And this is usually what I'll do. I'll come in and I'll draw a new perimeter about an eighth of an inch in or so. See that? That new pattern line, and that's what I'll cut out. And that's why I always have that little bit of wood showing around the edges. Those of you that have been with me a while, again, I know you've heard all this 20 times, maybe 20,000 times, but I always get new subscribers. I'm coming in, of course, now and sewing everything up just like I want it to be, so it just adds that fun texture. Here's how the carrot looks, so super cute. Don't you love the wonky of the carrot? Love it. And then I'm coming around just to kind of finish. Um, I, you know, skip forward a little bit for you, but I am sewing my little paper on the bunny. This is just some text paper. I know Hobby Lobby carries some text paper and stuff like that as well. And I'm coming in with my scissor blades again, just adding really fine. Sometimes I do it heavy handed, but kind of light on the, the papers this time to give that little texture around everything. Oh, I just love this set. Have I said I love this set? You're gonna love it too. Now that everything's done, I've got it all sanded. You can see sanded, look at that carrot all sanded up. Oh my gosh, so super cute. And this is all kind of sanded and distressed as well. Just a little bit of light sanding. I'm gonna come in with some of that drop cloth paint, adding some little dots with our stylus tool here onto the greenery of the large carrot. Instead of the lines, and I'm adding the dots on this, and I'll add some dots on the little carrot. Then I'm coming in with the watered down paint again, and I'm gonna splatter everything up just a little bit. It's real subtle on the paper, but you can see it, but then just a little bit of the splatters on the, the you know, uh, painted portion at the bottom, I think looks super cute. Just wherever you wanna add, this adds a lot of detailing, just those splatters. You can do it, again, really heavy-handed or lightly handed, either way to suit your taste. Gluing the paper onto the carrot and then gluing the top on a, our carrot as well and gluing the paper onto our tiny little heart. Yes, I sewed that, look at that tiny little heart. <laughs> Punching a hole with my crocodile into the tag here. And we'll glue that onto our wood tag, the paper tag onto our wood tag. Gluing the paper onto our little cute wonky tail. And then gluing our paper onto the top three quarters of our bunny. This is what it looks like, I love it. And just that little edge of wood showing around it. Mm, I just love that look. Gonna glue our tiny cute wonky carrot onto our tag. Glue our tail down into position. And then I'm gonna add some twine. I've threaded it through the hole of the tag. I'm just gonna tie a simple bow here. Hold our tag in place. And then I'll cut the tails at the length I want. And I'm gonna add some of these little mini beads. They come from a multi-bead pack from Dollar Tree. Different sizes in it. I'm gonna add three little beads onto each uh, tail here and then tie a knot at the end after I get it to the length I want and cut off the excess so my beads don't fall off. I always like my a little bit longer, my tails when I make bows a little bit longer, especially when I add beads. Then I'm going to glue the little heart on the ear and when I do that this project is complete. So I really hope you enjoyed all of these projects. Remember down below, there'll be a link to my blog where you can 
grab those PDF or PNG files for your own projects. Remember, I will have a link down below to all the product that came from craftingwithkimber.com, including this cute bunny kit. Again, thank you, thank you, Kim. My vision, your design element. What a fantastic, cute combination. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel to grow. Please share this with a friend. That also helps my channel to grow. And I want people to be excited and inspired to create their own beautiful home decor. And leave me a comment down below and let me know, number one, which project was your favorite. And number two, if you're going to order this bunny kit. I've got to know. <laughs> Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Jesus is the King of all kings and has the ability to heal all things. He has the ability to heal all emotional, physical, and mental needs. He has the ability to heal all your needs. You only need to ask. It's easy. It doesn't take any sort of physical ability with a gold medal or educational degree with a doctorate. It only takes a humble heart to ask and a mind to believe that God can and will deliver what you ask. Jesus simply states to stand at the door and knock, and the door will be opened. Now, the road may be long, and it may not be easy as God arranges everything together for good to give you the exact healing you need. So you must have the patience to endure and know beyond any shadow of a doubt that God hears you, He will always be with you, and He will work everything out according to His perfect will. You must have the faith to believe. In loving Jesus, you must know that he cares for you. In having faith in Jesus, you must know that he hears you and will not leave you alone to try and survive this by yourself. In believing in Jesus, you must know that there is always a hope filled with his grace and mercy for your life. He would not have it any other way. He loves you so much that he died for you. He put your life above his to show how deep and how wide and how high his love is for you. So there's no reason to doubt that he wouldn't help and heal you. There's no reason to not ask for anything in your life. Never think you aren't good enough to ask. If you don't feel worthy for some reason, then simply open your heart to him and humbly ask for forgiveness of whatever you feel is holding you back. He's always listening, always ready to forgive, always willing to be on your side. Open your heart to him and he will help you and then be ready to receive all he has for you. Be ready to be healed. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.